Hey there everybody, Bun Rob here. Welcome back to Starting Out Solitary. This is week 257 and we are talking about Harry Potter characters that we resonate with. Now, from what I remember reading uh, from the prompt for this week, it's specifically the character from Harry po the Harry Potter series that we resonate with regarding our practice or the kind of magic that, you know, we when we do, we, we work, we cast. Um, I can't really say that there are characters I, I really resonate with as far as, like, my practice goes, though maybe a little bit, and I'll get to that in a minute, but most of what I'll be talking about are how I see bits and pieces of myself in some of the characters in the Harry Potter series. Now, and before I get further into this video, I just want to apologize for how late this video is. I've been a little sick the past couple of days. Don't worry, it has nothing to do with the coronavirus. I take uh, medication for diabetes, and it comes with a little bit of side effects. Not, nothing major, but every once in a while, mm, the medication I take is can be very finicky as far as you need to time everything just right or otherwise you will be sick for a couple hours and for various different reasons because the things have just been so busy and so hectic on my end the past couple of days that I've not been able to time things just right and so it has been making me sick a little bit putting me behind schedule and all the different things that I that I'm, I'm up to that I'm working on uh, currently and part of that is, you know, basically came into me not being able to do this video until real late. You probably won't be seeing this video until sometime with Thursday. I, like I said, I do apologize about that. But other than that, um, as far as resonating with bits and pieces of personality, uh, I seeing myself in, in certain characters from the Harry Potter series, there's a number that I could say, but... A few come to mind the most. First and foremost, I'm going to talk about my favorite character in the entire series, Rubius Hagrid. Now, I see myself in him a good bit. Part of it is the fact that he, in a lot of ways, is just so jovial. He, he is just so happy. Like he, he could just he, in a lot of ways, is a very light-hearted character. But at the same time, he can be very light-hearted, very jovial one minute and then be extremely serious the next depending on what's going on and i find myself being in that kind of situation i can have fun i can be you know very zany very goofy at times and then depending on the conversation depending on the on the situation at hand i can in an instant in a heartbeat switch over to being dead serious about what's going on also Rubius Hagrid has a major temper. He has a terrible temper, and I have that too. Um, I have done as much as I can over the over the the years to to control my temper, to learn self discipline, and I've done a fairly good job about it. Um, my temper was actually a lot worse growing up when I was in my teenage years, but yeah, I have a really really atrocious temper i'm not gonna lie to you about that and there are times in the series where either in the movies or in the books where haggard loses it just completely loses it in anger and i'm like yeah if i was there in that series and if i was in his shoes maybe not all the instances but at least a few that i can think of that come to mind I go, yeah i could kind of see myself you know either reacting exactly the way that he did or pretty similar um, another, th uh, thing that I, uh, can resonate with him with, uh, with Rubius Haggard with, and this is one of the, the only times that it gets a little bit less of personality traits and more into one's practice, but Rubius Haggard is all about his animals. Uh, part of my practice is spirit work, so you know I work, I, I interact with, I build relationships, I work with a lot of spiritual, otherworldly critters. Some of which are considered as fantasy creatures uh, here in today's society, uh, primarily fairy, fairy folk, the she, but others too. And while it was never my intention to work with the quote-unquote more dangerous ones, um, I have. 
just naturally found myself interacting with and collect collecting for lack of a better term ending up with relationships uh, working relationships devotional relationships with another a number of beings who are of species that are considered dangerous are not the easiest to handle and i know uh, it is for for haggard it's very much a trademark of his character that he loves magical creatures the more dangerous the better then again, who can blame him for wanting a dragon? If I was in his shoes, I'd, yeah, that whole thing with, uh, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, yeah, that would be, that would be, that would be me being in his shoes down to the T there. <laughs> um, he, uh, in a lot of ways, Haggard's a very sensitive soul, and I am too. I'm a, I'm a gent, I'm at my heart, I kind of have a, I don't know if I would say I have a rough exterior, but, I can be rough around the edges at times, but deep down inside, I have a gooey, soft center, and I have no no qualms, no pride about crying, sometimes even bawling like a baby, if the situation calls for it. Um, yeah, and another another thing that I have in common with Haggard is archery. I mean, he uses a crossbow. I I haven't done it in years, but I am an archer in real life. Uh, when I was in high school, I led a three-person, all-blind and visually impaired archer archer team uh, for my state's high school competition, archery competition. And I love archery. I've gone hunting with uh, either compound bow or crossbow in the past. So, um, Seeing Hagrid uh, going into the Forbidden Forest, especially in Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, uh, trying to figure out what's going on with the unicorns, why they're being attacked, so on and so forth, and him carrying his crossbow with him, him having it with him in in, in dire situations. Yeah, I could totally see myself, you know, in that kind of, you know, doing that kind of thing. Um, also, one of the reasons why I dig Hagrid, part of the reasons why I resonate with him, and why I partly because he's one of my favorite characters from the series, is because of the fact that I'm, I'm a tall, big guy. Granted, I'm nowhere near as tall or as big as he is. In the book series, he is 11, 11 feet, 6 inches tall. In the movies, last I looked, he uh, the the outfit, the, uh, the um, costume slash setup they got for the actor who played Hagrid, it ended up being somewhere around like 8 feet something. I'm only 6 feet, 4 inches tall. But, you know, I have long hair, I have a beard. I've been in situations in the past where I've actually had kids think that I'm haggard or mistake me for haggard. Like, I know for the opening for uh, Harry Potter, The Deathly Hallows Part 2, uh, I got dragged into going seeing it. Uh, Harry Potter, The Half-Blood Prince, Deathly Hallows, and The Atrocity that is... Cursed Child are the only things of the series that I'm not a fan of to the point that I tend to ignore their existence altogether. If far my concern, neither of those three thing, three pieces of literature never happened. Um, but I got roped in to go see the Deathly Hell movies and people of all ages were there and they were dressed as different characters. Now granted, I wasn't dressed up as Haggard, but at the time I, I had a trench coat that while it was made from cowhide, cow leather, it looked a lot like Haggard's coat, and it had a lot of pockets like Haggard's coat, and I tend to keep a lot of different stuff in it at any given time. And so I would come in, and I remember we were waiting in line to grab tickets, and there was this uh, teenage girl, and she, I guess she was a babysitter. She had uh, three kids with, with her that she was taking to go see, and they were all dressed up as the Golden Trio, so Harry, Hermione, and Ron. And the one dressed as Harry looks to... And the teenage girl's like, look, it's Hagrid. It's Hagrid. So yeah, so that aside, um, as far as other characters I can resonate with, I can resonate with Lynn Lovegood a little bit. Uh, I don't show it too often, but I, I can be very... I can see things from different perspectives. I tend to, like, especially if I'm getting in conversation with someone or I'm trying to figure something out for people, for our friends, um, especially if I'm working with other people doing magical workings or trying to help counsel people, give advice, what have you. I can see things from different perspectives, which I know is something that Luna can do. Um, 
another thing is that I resonate with her very much is just her being kind of whimsical, especially when I'm writing poetry, when I'm being very creative. I have a very whimsical side to me uh, and a very creative side to me. I don't really get to show it in public and, you know, on camera. Maybe it's something I might try to force myself or to get myself to show a bit more on my own channel. I don't know. We shall see. Um, but another thing that I resonate with Luna is her, she can be extremely blunt, like razor sharp blunt. And go back to, uh, talking about how I resonate with Haggard a little bit. Another thing, Haggard loves his drink. I love alcohol too. I, I incorporated my practice both from a religious aspect as well as a magical aspect of things. But I tend to drink in moderation. I try not to get drunk. But when I was a lot younger, in my you know early 20s, you know when you're in your early 20s, you do stupid things that sometimes you don't really care. You don't try to moderate yourself. And well, I've always been a goofy, zany drunk. I guess just take the goofy and zaniness that can be, you know, sometimes and amp it up to 11. I can also be blunt to the point that I can make people cry if I want to. Um, when I'm sober, I can be extremely tactful, sometimes too tactful. Uh, though I can be blunt if I want to, if I feel the need to. But when I am drunk, my ability to be tactful and considerate and respectful goes completely out the window and so yeah so in that aspect i can resonate with luna with luna love good i can be extremely blunt and you know to some at sometimes to some to some extent another character that i resonate a little bit <laughs> is hermione granger uh primarily there is a part during uh, harry potter and the philosopher's stone where she's trying to find information or trying to recall where she heard of Nicholas Flamel. And she finally got a hold of a book that she, quote, checked out for a little bit of late reading. It's a huge tome. And whenever I see or I hear that part of the book, it makes me giggle. Because that's basically me when I was like 10, 11. When I was as early as the age of 10, 11, I possessed the ability that I could read at a postgraduate level. I'm not entirely sure how many words I could read per minute. Per minute. I have never like timed myself, but uh, to put it this way, I it I once read all seven Harry Potter books from starting Friday morning and ending Saturday night. So just take that into consideration, if if you will. Um, and also, uh, kind of, I guess you could say Hermione like. While there's a lot of whimsy and creativity and feeling that goes into my my magic specifically, but my practice in general more so than logic, before I allow myself to get to those very feely, very artsy, very creative, very fluid aspects of my practice, there's very much an analytical, logical side that goes into it first, especially if I'm do attempting to do something that I've never done before or I don't have as much experience as I do with something else i will research it to the point of no return i'm a bit of a research fiend um, i can take months just to research a single topic because i want to know as much as i can about a particular subject or about a particular thing especially if i'm trying to incorporate it into metaphysics into my religious practice to what have you so yeah i can i can definitely you know identify with Hermione to, the, to some extent there. Uh, Sirius Black is another character I can resonate with. With Sirius Black, it's definitely the loyalty, and that's going back to Hagrid for a, for a moment. <laughs> Sorry about that. Both characters are extremely loyal. Both are, you know, things I resonate with both characters about very strongly. But the, the thing I resonate more about with Sirius Black is two things. One, the Sirius Black is selfless. He is willing to sacrifice so much for the people that he care about. In the book series, he escapes out of Azkaban just so that he can help protect Harry. He ends up sleeping in a cave and feeding mostly on rats for the majority of 
and other vermin for the and other creatures and whatever scraps he can get his hands on in his uh, animagus form as a dog during a goblet of fire just so that he can be close enough to Harry just in case Harry needs him for anything, be it moral support, what have you. Um, I am very selfless, especially to the people that I care about, and I will do just about anything to help the people that I love. Sometimes my selflessness can get me into trouble. Sometimes I can get a little too overboard about it, and it can get to the point where I end up giving up a little too much of myself or giving up of my resources just so that other people that I care about that are in my life can have what they need, you know, to to uh, survive and thrive. But another aspect of Sirius is that he is willing to go to whatever, you know, whatever met necessary needs in order to get vengeance. He wants to get vengeance not only for himself, for the fact that he's been locked up into Azkaban for all those years, but also to get revenge for the deaths of his friends, for James and Lily Potter. And, you know, I, I definitely see that, uh, dar you know, kind of an insight to a darker side of myself, definitely. Um, I am very passionate about the people that I love in my life, family, friends, and if necessary, I will you know, <laughs> do as much as I can, sometimes a little too much, in order to help them, in order to, um, you know, sometimes, like, I've been in situations in the past where people that I care about have been hurt, and I've not been able to either physically or legally get justice or revenge on their behalf, so I've turned to magical means. And sometimes those have those situations have gone a little too far. I went a little overboard, and they ended up being situations moments in my life where i weren't the proudest so take that as you will last but not least in this video i resonate a little bit with neville longbottom of all people partly because especially growing up and going to school middle school high school i was oh i was taller and bigger i've always been a tall big guy but i've always been you know, bigger than, you know, the people around me, especially when I was going to school. So I got picked on a lot, you know, and, and this kind of goes along the lines with how I resonate with 102. I've been picked on for being different, for being weird, um, for seeming to be weird. Like when I was in middle school, I was really big into metaphysics, getting into metaphysics, into spirituality, into folklore, uh, excuse me. A lot of my friends did not understand that, and so I got picked on a lot. Uh, same with Neville. Um, so I can definitely resonate there. Another thing I can resonate is Neville has a hard time doing a lot of kind of magic in the book series. And something I found, so for years I've been having issues connecting with and working with crystals to the point that I've been in small groups mostly, but groups of other pagans, which is what have you, and I've actually been taunted made fun of even kicked out for not being able to work with crystals at all for the most part well there's been a few exceptions but for the most part i've been unable to work with crystals and here recently i found out what's been going on it's not so much i can't work for crystals i cannot work with tumbled crystals for some weird reason the process of tumbling crystals does something to the energy of the stones that makes it almost nearly impossible if not impossible whatsoever for me to connect and work with them properly and that i don't know what my problem is i could work around it and i can i've since uh got my hands on some rough natural crystals of different types and i'm slowly learning how to work with them how to connect with them and, it, and it's going a lot smoother now and yeah so anyway those are just some of the ways how i connect with some of the characters in the series uh yeah, this this is a super fun, super exciting topic. I was super stoked when I heard when I found out that we were going to be doing this topic this week. Just a little lighthearted thing for us to do, especially after the past couple of serious topics we've been doing here on the channel. I hope you enjoyed this video, and till the next time I get to uh, converse and share with you like this as one of the sub hosts here on this channel. May Breach bless.